Essentially, that's what you're doing. You're presenting a narrative, and we need to get it. Whatever it is, we need to, you know, 
the notes, forget it, doesn't matter. We want to create a, a narrative that makes sense with or without our telling using words. Okay? Uh, so what's the third thing? Uh, uh, I forgot what the third thing is going to be. Uh, well, we'll get to that. All right? Uh, uh, I'm old, so it's really easy to forget. What did I just say? <laughs> uh, so, so in terms of the first woman, I'm lazy. Okay, so I want to just get as much of. Uh, I want to get to the point quickly from you. And so, let's take something easy. Is there any moment that's the most special moment in the first movie? The beginning is quite important. Okay, is it the most important? I'm talking about the most. Tell me either the most, either way, but dramatically speaking, the most dramatic moment or the most, you know, you could make it really easy on yourself and say, is there a loudest place? <laughs> is there a softest place? I mean, just look at it and tell me. Well, I would say one extremely dramatic moment is the recapitulation where the uh, cello plays its main theme again, but with this really um, kind of mysterious piano in the background, just because it's the character there is so different, so much softer, almost alien compared to everything that came before it. And given that it is the main theme that's being played, I think that kind of really is um, leading up to somewhere with it. Okay. All right, Elizabeth, do you agree with that? Um, I agree. I also think that um, in the first movement, the, the key change from where it also goes a lot slower is quite important as what? well. Just show me where. Um, yeah, yeah. Right, so since we don't know. Right. That's, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, theme. It is the second theme. Mm -hmm. It is something that it's, it's in contrast to obviously something in the first thing. So good, let's put a placeholder on that, okay? And so we have the end. Will you just play a little bit of, of the, that ending uh, that you say is the most special? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, just so that we can hear. to what you might be playing above that, on top of that. Go ahead. See what we 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 can get from it. Okay. 
is true, right? Let's uh, see whether you can now with the harmony and you're playing now da 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 da. And you know what was interesting? Before I heard a lot of cello and it's almost as if you were very distant. But when the harmony came I actually felt far more emotion. So maybe in some ways um, now this may be heresy but I Let's imagine that the harmony, the harmonies, the changing harmonies, are actually the emotion. And you, your job, is to actually present something that's seamless going towards, let's say, where we ended up. Let's hear what that sounds like. Not too, too fast, because otherwise we stop hearing uh, the harmonies we just hear. You know, that was... started saying I'd like to be lazy, right? You know, sometimes if you just find what what's going to make something speak, you actually don't need to try as hard. Sometimes you need to try really, really hard to make something speak, but then you really go for it. Okay, so that's that's a contrast in itself. I think um, now let's go to the very end. Which, so this is the beginning of the journey. And let's say, as far as the first movement is concerned, when you start bop, 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 is the sort of, it's the culminating point. Okay? So two points. Can you play a little bit of that, that ending?
is a little bit like a graveyard scene. You know, this is a little bit. Um, but let's say you use. So even though it's slower, it's more desolate. It's more sparse. Use something that you had before. Obviously, you're not using vibrato. You have a view on. Lots of things have changed in the intervening measures, or time, or years, or space, or whatever. So, how about if you, if before you were walking, and now maybe you have frostbite? <laughs> you know, you're late, you're gangrene, and you're still walking. So you're still using the headed towards, right? But you are inexorably slowed down. You're almost dead. <laughs> okay. I mean, your parents are recording this moment after, after that. So we know if you don't go come back. <laughs> you know, you know, frostbite, toes, amputated, you know. So let's try. Sorry, that's a bit too bad. Uh, so we can try playing. And then just, but with this kind of, you're still, you haven't quite given up, but you're not even shuffling. You're just inching the way forward. Let's try that. It's like almost the first one you were already dead, but still moving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the saying about some people who died, but they don't know it, you know? Like that, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that. So you want to be an active participant, inching forward, and it focuses your mind, doesn't it? Right? So in both cases, the very beginning and the end, although it's a very big contrast, you could say, okay, technically I should do this, I should do that, whatever. But actually, it's a mental placement. Mental placement. You've created a mental space or a mental image of something that automatically changes the play. Okay, and that's something, um, that's part of what you want this journey to be. So very, very quick, we have seven minutes, so what I'd like to do is, um, uh, Compliment you on the, on the playing of the second theme. Thank you. What made you play the theme that way? Did anybody say that in, you know, in Shostakovich, in, uh, you just, you know, you bang out the second theme and it's just so that it just really, it sounds rich and full, uh, regardless of, you know, oh, following that dynamic to its, right. you know, specific, precise right. decibel level. Well, um, I would say that the main kind of thing that I was going for here was the really singing character that's very unique to this theme um, compared to the others in the movie. I mean, I guess others sing too in certain ways, but this is especially kind of, um, I don't know, I, I like the Professor Stetner kind of described it as a Sinatra song, and I can, I frame Sinatra song. Ooh. <laughs> and I can, I can really see a lot of that. It's definitely, almost has some crooning to it. And a crooning. Yeah, crooning. Yeah, I try to. That. Well, it's it, it really, it, to me, it popped out, so to speak, uh, in a way that it really sunk, it really came out. And now, here's the second point that I was trying to make, is that essentially, uh, you know, the piano is a percussive instrument, the cello is a bowed instrument, hence, you know, 
the way of speaking anything is going to be different. And what do you do when, let's say, you switch the exact same either motivic things or thematic things uh, around? Do you have any uh, response to that? How would you how would you tackle you know sort of like a, a seemingly vast difference? Uh, between the two instruments, and how do you kind of make it? What's, what's one way to do it? One way you can do it is like saying, okay, I'm gonna make some things that I play more lyrical and try and connect, and you might try and say, well, you know, actually, if I can play three notes on one bow, that maybe occasionally I need to articulate or make distinct, more distinct, either something rhythmic or something uh, intervallic. Ba, da, da, da. If you were singing, you can't go da, da, da. You have to actually place your voice and your vocal cords in the position where it comes out. And you want to do that even though it may be easy for you to play da, da, you know. Hey, man, that's really easy. It's just a harmonic, you can hear, you know. So that's where you want to be able to spend uh, capital, energy, you know, put some of your capacity into that. That's what we end for five minutes. Uh, I'd like to focus on bop, 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 because once that starts, the world is no longer the same. Where's the first time that this starts? If I'm not mistaken, it's symbol one at the end of the second year. So, okay. So that's interesting. So you have ba da da. You have Frank Sinatra, you know, serenading you. And then what happened? Can you just show it? Shostakovich, it's not. <laughs> you just know that. And that da dum could be, you know, uh, drums, it could be, you know, military, it could be something very ominous, very threatening. So you can't play your usual pizzicato as in a nice, no matter what the. 